Good day, and welcome back to Awakened Faith Channel. Sharing from Father Oliveira. Brothers and sisters, hell is not just a story or a myth. It is a real place, and it is very serious. Many people do not believe in hell today. They think that everyone goes to heaven. But this is not true. Hell is a place of great suffering. It is where souls go when they choose to turn away from God. Now, I want to share a story I heard from one beloved brother who had a near-death experience. This person described seeing hell and the torment of souls there. They felt an overwhelming sense of despair. The heat was unbearable, and they could hear the cries of those suffering. It was a place of darkness filled with sorrow and hopelessness. Hell is real, and we need to take it seriously. Let us pray for ourselves and for others. Pray that everyone will open their hearts to God's love before it is too late. We must remember that there is hope and salvation in Jesus Christ. Now, let's get started to listen to his vision. I found myself looking down at my own lifeless body. There was no pain, no tightness in my chest. All I felt was confusion. My heart had stopped and paramedics were trying to revive me. But instead of panic, I felt like I was just watching everything from a distance. The room around me started to fade, and I was being pulled away by a strange force. I had heard stories about what happens after death, but nothing could have prepared me for what I was about to experience. Suddenly, I was surrounded by thick, heavy darkness. It was colder and more oppressive than anything I had ever known. I could hear terrible wailing, cries filled with pain and desperation. It was disturbing. I realized I was falling, faster and faster into what seemed like an endless pit. Then, just as suddenly, I stopped falling, and the darkness parted. I found myself in a desolate landscape, a place that felt hopeless and terrifying. I felt a sharp burning sensation under my feet. The heat was unbearable. I looked around, trying to understand what was happening. The first thing I noticed was the thick darkness. It wasn't just the absence of light, it was the absence of hope, mercy, and peace. As I moved forward, I saw countless souls, as far as my eyes could see, all writhing in pain. The ground was like fire, and the entire landscape had a reddish glow. Smoke rose from the ground, and the torment of these souls went beyond anything physical. It was an eternal suffering, a place of pure agony. I saw men, women, and even children being tormented. It didn't matter who they had been in life, rich, poor, famous, or unknown. In this place, they were all the same, reduced to their suffering. No one looked at each other. Every soul was consumed by their own pain completely oblivious to the agony of others. There was no comfort, no escape, no moment of relief. It was an eternity of torment. Among the souls I saw was someone who left me in tears, my wife. She had died years ago from a drug overdose after struggling with addiction. Her eyes were hollow, filled with regret. She was being tormented, chained by her past sins. I wanted to reach her to hold her, to take her away from the pain. But I couldn't move. Our eyes met, and in that moment, I understood her deep suffering. She hadn't found peace in life, and she hadn't found it in death either. As I stood there, frozen by the weight of what I was witnessing, I heard a voice I instantly recognized. I turned and was shocked to see Muhammad Ali standing in the flames. He wasn't the proud, confident man I remembered from TV. He looked defeated, deeply sorrowful. I had admired him in his prime, and there was no mistaking it was him. Without me saying anything, he began to speak, as though he was compelled to share his message. The first thing he said was, I regret it. I regret not believing in Jesus. I was stunned to hear those words from him. Muhammad Ali had been one of the most famous figures to speak about his faith in Islam. But here he was in hell, telling me he had made a terrible mistake. He told me 
how his belief in Islam had led him to this place, and he bitterly cried. He shook his head in despair and said that he had followed Islam all his life, but it was not the truth. The only way to avoid this place, while still alive, he said, was through Jesus. He didn't believe it when he was alive, but now he knew it was true. He pleaded for someone to hear him, for someone to escape the fate he had resigned himself to. He said something that I'll never forget. Tell the Muslims that they are on the wrong path. Jesus is the only savior. They need to repent. His words broke my heart. He was desperate for people to know the truth before it was too late. I saw more clearly the horrors around me. Many of the souls were just like me, ordinary people who had rejected the truth in life and were now facing eternal separation from God. Muhammad Ali's message was clear. He was there because he refused to, was to accept Jesus as the savior. If others didn't listen, they would end up in the same place of torment. Suddenly, I felt a force pulling at me again, but this time it was different. It wasn't the cold, heavy darkness pulling me down. It was a light, warm and inviting. As Ali's figure began to fade, I saw a flash of someone I knew immediately was Jesus. Before I could fully understand, I gasped for breath. My chest rose and I took in a sharp breath. I was back in my body, back in the world of the living. The paramedics were all around me. I lay on the stretcher, weak and shaken, but the memory of what I had just experienced was crystal clear. I had been to hell. I had seen my wife. I had heard Muhammad Ali's desperate plea, but no one believed me. They thought I was crazy. The world we live in is full of distractions, full of lies that keep us from seeing the truth. Many beliefs, like Islam, promise a path to heaven. But the reality is, only Jesus can save us. Muhammad Ali's plea wasn't just for me, it was for every Muslim, for every person deceived into thinking that faith in anything other than Jesus would lead them to salvation. I thought of all those still alive, walking on the same dangerous path, unaware of where it would lead. Millions of people are clinging to beliefs that offer no hope after death. They trust in gods and religions that cannot save them from torment. In hell, the truth was clear. There is only one way to be saved, and that is through Jesus. Only his love and sacrifice can spare a soul from eternal suffering. But sometimes, it's not just the fault of those who don't believe. It's also how we, as Christians, sometimes treat them. We push them away. We turn our backs on them. We judge them and condemn them. And in doing so, we fail to show them the one thing that could save them, God's love. How many times, in our haste to defend our faith, do we forget that Jesus didn't come to condemn the world but to save it? We chase people away with harsh words, unwillingness to listen, and judgmental attitudes. But the people we push away are the ones who need Jesus the most. Instead of driving them off, we need to pray for them with all our hearts. We need to stand in the gap for those who don't yet know the truth. Those who have been deceived, just like Ali had been. Because once they cross over into eternity, it will be too late. We need to pray that their eyes will be opened, that God's love will reach them, even in their darkest moments. We need to pray that they will see the truth before it's too late. Hell is real, and the only way to escape it is through Jesus Christ. Don't wait until it's too late to find the truth.